Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackwitz. This is the Caged Review, and this is going to be me still trying to catch up with a bunch of wrestling reviews that I haven't been able to do. So this starts uh, so, July 1st, 2019. I'm going to get right into this with a really surprising match, honestly. Uh, you had a couple of really stupid gimmicks with Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley where they were doing, like, arm wrestling and tug of wars. And so they start this match, false count anywhere, and you just kind of expected it to be bad. And this is word for word what I have in my notes. Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lashley, false count anywhere, good fucking match, holy shit. Best opening to Raw in a long time. Those are my notes. That pretty much says it all. You could feel Paul Heyman all over this fucking opening. So, you have Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley. They are just killing each other, going all over the arena. They're in the crowd. They're um, they're in like a concession area outside. They're just everywhere. In the ring, outside the ring. Eventually, it leads to up the ramp towards the entryway. The gorilla position in the back uh, into the entryway out to the ramp, the stage. And there's a spot where Bobby Lashley gets driven straight through the uh, the Titan Tron. And you have a bunch of sparks going off, thing caves in, uh, and it looks just great. But what I loved about this part of the show in particular was that normally you have Michael Cole just feeding up a bunch of dumb shit and building up the situation, and sometimes words just don't need to be said. And that was one of the great things about this moment is nobody said anything. They just let the moment lie. They had the medics come out for both Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman. It looked legit. It felt legit. Um, it just it really went back to those raw days um, from like, you know, 2000 to maybe 2009-ish. We'll give it that. Um, where they just knew how to set up something to make it feel certain way and that's exactly what this was so these two behemoths just take each other to the limit they both looked really strong and Bobby Lashley probably looked better here than he has since he's come back to the WWE in all honesty he really did I think he looked great he looked like a beast um, so it was very very cool to see great opening and then that leads into Xavier Woods and Big E versus the Viking Raiders um, and Xavier and Big E win via DQ. The Samoa Joe comes out and he gets involved. And so you have uh, Kofi come out and then you have the New Day versus the Viking Raiders and Samoa Joe. And decent match. I don't know that anything really stood out to me in this match. Uh, and it basically ends with Samoa Joe. He gets Kofi in the Coquina Clutch. And there you go. They got the win. Then you get this bit with Drake Maverick and his wife and uh, R-Truth backstage. And uh, I honestly, you know, too far back for me to remember everything that happens. So I know that the 24-7 thing with Drake Maverick and R-Truth has been gold. It really has. There's been a lot of really good things. So we'll just leave it at that. Uh, then you get AJ Styles, Gallows, and Anderson backstage. And... Uh, this time you have Gallows and Anderson trying to say, you know, AJ, you've been talking about us, but what about you? You're not the same AJ as before. So they're trying to build him up too. Then you get No Way Jose versus Cesaro, and it's thrown out. Uh, Cesaro just goes way lay on Jose. And then you have 24-7 bit with uh, Maverick, his wife, and Truth again. And I'm not sure if this was the motel. I don't think it was yet. But that was gold when that happened. Uh, then you get Charlie interviews the Street Profits backstage. This is kind of the introduction to Street Profits to the main scene here. Um, I don't know if this was their very first ever, but I think it, it might have been their first promo. Which So far, Street Profits have been very good in every promo they've done. They've really killed it. Then you get a backstage Miz interview. I don't even remember what it was about, to be very honest. Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre promo. Um, they're talking about how they're not really afraid of The Undertaker. The Undertaker shows up. 
And then, of course, they want no part of them. You get Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. They got a backstage promo because they want to fight um, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. So you have Lacey Evans after that with Baron Corbin versus Natalia. Um, Lacey Evans wins. She was not good. Uh, Lacey Evans wasn't good in the ring. She wasn't good on the mic. I, I really was not a big fan of her. Charlie interviews Ricochet backstage. And then you have Gallows and Anderson there. They interrupt. And they're, you know, basically talking on AJ's behalf. Uh, after that, you have Gallows, Anderson, Ricochet, and Styles backstage. Where, I think this is where Styles walks up to Ricochet and slaps him. He challenges him and then slaps him and then Ricochet slaps him back. And then you get a two out of three falls match with Elias versus The Miz. Uh, Miz gets the first fall, Elias gets the second fall, Miz gets the third fall. And really, that's all you can say. I mean, I wasn't a really big fan of the match, to be very honest. I do remember that. Charlie interviews Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins backstage. They get interrupted by Maria and Mike Nellis, who challenge them to a fight because they're the it couple or, you know, whatever. So you get Lynch and Rollins versus Maria and Mike Kanellis. Of course, Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins are going to go over. I mean, how could you not? And you get a real quick promo with Paul Heyman, and he gets interrupted by the Street Profits. I don't even remember much about that, honestly. A moment of bliss. Uh, Alexa Bliss has Nikki Cross in her corner. Uh, they're interviewing Carmella. Carmella. Starts taking shots of Bliss. Turns into Carmelo versus Bliss. Carmelo wins the match. It was actually a pretty short match. And then it was Carmelo versus Nikki Cross. And so they're kind of trying to establish that Nikki is actually the better between Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. So Nikki Cross goes over in the second match. Uh, backstage, you get a Cross and Bliss interview. Where they're asking, you know, Cross, you know, like, don't you feel like you should have more of a role here, and um, basically she says no, which is stupid. Then you get R-Truth and Drake Maverick. Um, Drake Maverick wins a 24-7 belt with his wife in a backstage bit. And then you get AJ Styles versus Ricochet. Now this, I do remember being a very good match. Um, AJ Styles and Ricochet, you would expect it to be a good match. It wasn't, it actually, I remember it wasn't as good as I expected it to be, but it was still a good match. You know what I mean? Um, Ricochet, he's still got the U.S. Championship. And then you get the heel turn from AJ Styles, where he just pummels Ricochet afterwards. So, in my notes here, I wrote that it was a good show. And, um, unfortunately, this is one of the shows... Like, every review I've done so far, I kind of remember everything pretty well. This is actually the first review I've done being so far back. I mean, it's over a month back, a month and a half now. And I don't really remember it that well. So it says good show. Um, I know I really love the Bobby Lashley Braun Strowman opening. That was very cool. The AJ Styles turn at the end was very good, too. So you have something that really set the tone and that something that really left you wanting to see more uh, with the AJ turn. Um, Miz and Elias, I don't remember caring that much about, and then Maria and Mike Kanellis with Rollins and Lynch. I don't know, dude. I wasn't that into that. So, I guess from what I remember of it, and keep in mind, this is just going from what I remember of it, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10, which is a good show, not a great show. Uh, it still had its weak points. I think it was a much stronger Raw than we've had in the last several weeks, except for the one just prior to this. Uh, the one prior to this was amazing. So uh, I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. I think that's where I'm going to stand with it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jackwitz, Cage Nation, out.